Hey everybody, it's Katie here, and today I'm going to be talking about my least favorite books that I read in 2017. So a few disclaimers before I begin. The first one is obvious, and that's to say that in this video I'm going to be talking about books that I didn't like. And so I might mention books that you do like, and if I do, I'm really sorry. I promise I'm not trying to offend you or hurt your feelings. These are just my opinions, and I'm just a girl sitting in front of a camera. I'm not a real book critic, and even if I were, who cares? Who cares what critics have to say? You read the books that you like. Power to you. You read those books. Who even cares what Katie's Cuddly Book World has to say? I don't even care what I have to say. Also, my second disclaimer is that these books didn't necessarily come out in 2017, I just read them in 2017, so some of them were published a few years ago. Lastly, I have a rose bush outside of my window and the wind is blowing and it's kind of scratching against my window and so if you hear that unpleasant sound, I'm really sorry. Okay, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so the first book that I want to talk about is Were Girl by C.D. Bell. So this book is about a lot, <laughs> but the short synopsis is that there is this high school girl, Nessa, and she's on the cross-country team, and one day she's practicing in one of the woods beside her house, and she encounters a wolf, and it bites her, and she starts to transform. But this book has a lot going on. It's got a chemical spill, it has like an evil hospital sort of Stranger Things type vibe. It has like illegal organ growing slash harvesting. It has a lot going on. And I think the reason that I didn't really like it is because it was originally supposed to be a choose your own adventure novel. Um, you know, when you like, it'll say, turn to page 45 if you want to turn left type thing. So this choose your own adventure company had a meeting, they were throwing together all these crazy off the wall ideas. And then they just decided, you know what? Instead of making this a choose your own adventure novel, we should just make it a regular novel. So they hired this author, C.D. Bell, and they just handed her this big pile of crazy ideas and they were like, make this into a cohesive novel. So if you take that into account, she actually did a pretty decent job with what she was given. But it, it ends up feeling really all over the place and I think it could have been a really cool story, but something about just the way that she put it all together, I kind of didn't like. And I had really, really high expectations going into this book because I really like werewolves and this is a female protagonist who's a werewolf and that's something that I had never seen in YA so I was like, whoa! And then it had all this extra stuff and I thought it was gonna be sort of like a Stranger Things thing. The way that it was all brought together was just a lot. It was just a lot. <laughs> and. I am going to say that it was pretty entertaining to read, but I think it was entertaining for the wrong reasons, not unlike how you might watch kind of a poor quality movie for entertainment. And I laughed a lot because I was reading her author's note at the end and she was talking about how it was originally a choose your own adventure novel and how none of the ideas were originally her own. She was just told what to write, um, but she mentioned that there was one character in the book that was completely her own creation. And that was the character that was like the cheesiest, most unrealistic character in the book. He was just basically Jacob Black, but he had a giant wolf tattoo either on his chest or his back, I can't remember. The only difference, he had the motorcycle and everything. And that was her one original contribution to the book. And the book in general was just really pretty cheesy. And even though it had so many of these off-the-wall things going on, there were still elements that were really predictable. Like, I could tell right off the bat who was a werewolf and who wasn't. So yeah, the writing in general was just kind of underwhelming. I will say that I think if I had read this book when I was like 13, I probably would have really, really loved it. So maybe I didn't enjoy it so much just because I wasn't the target audience. Overall, this book wasn't a bad book. It was just not great. So I gave it three stars. The next book that I want to talk about is Fan Art by Sarah Jagay. I was actually really, really excited to read this book because it looks adorable. So it's about a boy who's in high school and his name is Jamie and he works for the literary and art magazine for his school and he's gay but he isn't out 
and at the beginning of the book he starts to figure out that he has a crush on his best friend Mason. And so the whole book is just him running this art journal and trying to cope with his feelings for Mason because he wants to tell him but he also really doesn't want to tell him for a lot of obvious reasons. He's afraid it's going to ruin their friendship and he also doesn't want to be out because he lives in a pretty small conservative town and he's worried that the students in his school and the people around him are going to react really negatively to it. So it sounds like a really interesting story and it also has little pieces of art inside of it which I think are really cool. Like it has this little comic in the middle and I think that's really neat. But I ended up not liking it because it took this really good idea and it just was poorly executed. I feel like it kind of perpetuated a lot of stereotypes accidentally. I feel like the author was really really trying to do a good thing with this book but she just kind of was a little bit out of touch. I just kind of get the vibe that maybe the author hasn't ever spoken to a high school boy that's gay and I could be totally wrong maybe she has or maybe she's drawing from personal experience I don't know but the, the way that the book comes together makes it seem like oversimplifying a lot of things and saying things that are kind of like, mm, that's problematic. So for instance, there's one line, and I can't remember verbatim what it is, and I don't really want to look for it right now, but Jamie says something along the lines of, it doesn't really make sense that I'm gay because I like sports just fine and I'm not in theater. I think that she did it on purpose. I think she was trying to say that you can be in theater and not be gay, or you can be in sports and still be gay, and you know, just trying to take down some of those stereotypes. But it's like the way that she wrote it didn't help that message come across, and it really just seemed like it was perpetuating those stereotypes instead of dispelling them. And she does that kind of thing like several times throughout the story. And then aside from all the things that I thought were kind of problematic, the writing itself was just not fantastic. It was really simple and the story kind of just... <laughs> I don't want to say it didn't have a plot because it had a plot and it had a purpose. Nothing really happened. It was just like he was in, he was in school and then there was uh, a piece of art that they didn't want to publish because it had a homosexual couple in it. And then there was a prom, which nothing happened at, and then it just was over. I don't know, I thought it was a really good idea, but just not really well written. But if this book helped you deal with similar issues, or if it opened your eyes to different perspectives, that's great. I'm happy that it did that for you. I just thought that it was really lackluster, and so I gave it three stars as well. The next book that I'm going to talk about, I really, really, really didn't like, and I gave it one star, and I actually have a review for it already on this channel, and so I'm gonna stick that in the description box so that you can go and visit it if you want some more explanation as to why I didn't really like this book, because I don't really want to go into it too in depth because I would just start ranting and I would get really angry and this video would be 30 minutes long. I will pop that link in the description and you can go watch it. I hesitate to link my older videos because I'm constantly aware of the fact that I am terrible at YouTube and so it's a really cringy awkward video and it's really low quality and like you can't see me and the sound quality is bad and I'm just like really awkward kind of like I probably am in this video you know but just ignore that and I, I rant about this book for a while if you are curious. But anyway, the book is Althea and Oliver by Christina Maracho. So this is about two high school kids, Althea and Oliver, and they've been friends since they were really, really young. And they live next door to each other and they hang out all the time. And when they're, I think it's their junior or senior year, but I can't remember which, Althea begins to realize that she has a crush on Oliver. And so that's all very well and good, except that Oliver has some rare disease that's kind of similar to narcolepsy, but not quite, where he will just fall asleep at random times and he will stay asleep for days or sometimes months at a time. And the book is told from both of their perspectives and that's kind of neat and the author does know her way around a sentence. She has very lyrical, pretty writing, but I cannot stand this book and there are a lot of reasons, but if I just had to sum them up, it would be 
Althea. I do not like Althea. So she is struggling with a lot. She has a lot going on in her life. She struggles with substance abuse. She struggles with some mental illness. And those are things that I don't fault her for at all. In fact, I'm glad that we have a flawed protagonist. And I, I know a lot of people who go through similar issues. I know that that's a common thing. And it's nice to have a character who also is going through those struggles. I feel like it can be really relatable and it can be really helpful. And so I'm not mad that Althea is going through all of these things and that she is a flawed character. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that she does a couple of things in this book, but one thing in particular, and it's just written off as okay because she's going through these struggles. And you can go through struggles, but you can't hurt somebody else that bad and just write it off and pretend like it's okay, because it's not. And it's not only her who acts like it's okay, but it's the rest of the characters in the book. They just think like, uh, you know, it's fine. And they downplay what she does. And she does something like, so bad, ugh, I don't, ugh. You really should click on that link if you have time and I will tell you what she does. But it just is, it's a, it's a sack full of garbage, basically. And it, it's, it's really harmful to her readers and it perpetuates this idea that men can't get hurt in that way. It just maybe you kind of catch where I'm going. She she does a she does a bad thing and it's just like written off as totally completely okay. It's not. It's not okay. And all the characters think that it's okay. And I feel like the author kind of thinks it's okay because she doesn't really do anything to tell us that it's not. She just writes it in there and has all the characters just ignore it and kind of move past it. And it's never addressed. And it's like, are you not aware that this is harmful to your readers? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm starting to rant. So I'm just going to cut it off there. Yeah, Alfie and Oliver, it has one star for me. Okay, so the last book that I have to talk about is probably my most controversial because everybody loves it. <laughs> I've only been able to find two other booktubers who felt the way that I did about it. So I am really afraid to talk about why I didn't like it because I'm afraid that I'm going to hurt a lot of feelings or I'm going to lose a bunch of subscribers or I'm going to receive, like, threats. I'm really scared. Maybe I won't even talk about it. Maybe I just won't even talk about it. You know what? No. This is 2018, and I'm gonna stand up for what I believe in. <sighs> okay, all right, here it goes. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. I know, I know, I'm really sorry. Just hear me out, stay a bit. Okay, so I actually really, really liked the beginning of this book, and I can totally see the appeal, and I know why so many people like it. It's just that there are elements in it that just didn't sit very well with me. So the first third, maybe even half of this book, I actually really was enjoying it. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, except there are fairies, and two of my favorite things are Beauty and the Beast and fairies, so really, I was all in. I thought the writing was really pretty, I liked a lot of the characters, but something happened that I just really didn't like. And then all of the characters reacted to this thing in a way that I also didn't really like. And so I thought, okay, well this is probably intentional, and it's probably just a launch pad for all the characters to jump off of and grow as people. And so I stuck with it and I kept reading. And then it just felt like all of the things that were bothering me just kept getting worse. And it felt like all of the characters, with the exception of Lucian, I loved Lucian the entire time. He was my favorite character. But it seemed like all of the characters, except for Lucian, just shifted and they shifted into people that I didn't like. The way that the relationship dynamic between Feyre and Tamlin changed, and then later the relationship dynamic between Feyre and Reese, it just was really viscerally upsetting for me. Like, I, I couldn't stomach it, so I had to quit reading the book, actually. I couldn't finish it, I DNF'd it. I just couldn't, I couldn't read it. It was making me really angry, and it was giving me a lot of anxiety, and it just wasn't a pleasant reading experience for me. And if you guys want, I can make a video just about this book 
and go into detail and kind of elaborate what exactly about it made me uncomfortable. But I know that most of you, if not all of you, really, really love the book. So you're probably like, yeah, I don't actually care what you have to say, so you probably wouldn't want a video about it. But if you do, uh, leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to make one. But yeah, that concludes my Worst Reads of 2017 video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and if you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, be on the lookout for my best reads of 2017 video. That is a more positive video and I'll be posting it in the next couple of days or so. But until then, happy reading. Bye!